Alright guys, how's it going? I am not having the best of luck regarding my planned videos recently and the latest one has had to be postponed until next week due to a delay in a presentation that I expected to see this week but was pushed back. And so I instead wrote a full script on a backup video called Inside Intel, which you will see sometime next week I guess. I had fully intended to release this one tonight or Saturday morning but right out of the blue last night I received an email from someone I immediately recognised for having given me one accurate and specific piece of information on Zen 2. And when I checked the encrypted email, I finally got my first leaked information on Zen 3. Now, I have covered a little bit of Zen 3 speculation-wise, specifically around a few comments by Forrest Norod and HPC Advisory Council's presentation some time ago. That was actually way back in October, and Forrest comments in November last year. I will take a brief look at these again during this video as I go over the new information that I have received. As usual, grain of salt, all I can say is that the one piece of information that I got from this person before, it was specific and accurate. And this video is also the start of a tactical change by me. You've seen in the past how I've saved up a bunch of leaks and rumours and then dumped it all into one huge video. The last time I did that was my Tech Rumour Mill 2 where I leaked Ponte Vecchio and a bunch of other stuff. And what happened was I simply did not get the credit for those leaks. And for that reason, from now on, any leak that I feel is worth talking about, I will make a shorter video like this one while simultaneously releasing an article on the website covering it as well. Simply put, there will be no more excuses for the rest of the tech press not citing us as the initial leaker. So, let's get on with it. Now, my source assumed that I already had some concrete info on Zen 3 by now, but in fact, no, I simply didn't. I have heard absolutely nothing from leaks. The only thing I have had to go on regarding Zen 3 were those aforementioned comments by Forrest and the HPC presentation. So going through the info that I received one step at a time, Zen 3, 2020, and we'll see if that 2020 holds up, because I am not convinced. The first piece of information was two threads per core. Now that is no huge surprise here. In the distant past, the info I had said SMT4 was coming for Milan, or four threads per core. But I gave up on that the instant I saw this on the HPC video, which clearly said that Milan would be 64 cores and two threads per core. Next up for the information, this one is going to be slightly disappointing I think to a lot of people. 10 to 15% single threaded IPC increase over Zen 2. Now to me at least this was pretty disappointing as I was expecting 20 plus and the reason for that was simply Forrest's comments over at the street seemed to make that pretty clear. When asked about what kind of performance gains Milan's CPU core microarchitecture, Zen 3 will deliver relative to Zen 2, Forrest observed that, unlike Zen 2, which was more of an evolution of the Zen microarchitecture, Zen 3 will be based on a completely new architecture. And he also asserted that Zen 3 will deliver performance gains right in line with what you would expect from an entirely new architecture. And then speaking in general about its performance expectations, Norod said, at a time when Intel is promising double-digit IPC gains for future microarchitectures, AMD is confident in being able to drive significant IPC gains each generation. Putting all that together, it seemed rather clear to me that 20% plus was the target at least. 10-15% to IPC though, that doesn't really seem high enough for this kind of level of bragging that Forrest was doing, to be frank. However, do note that I was told 10-15% to single-threaded IPC, and the multi-threaded IPC could be a bit higher. How so? Well, here's how. The next piece of information I got was that it is now 8 cores per CCX. And you know, this is one of those times where I wish I wasn't following tech so closely. And you might just feel the same way some days. And if we go back to the HPC Advisory Council video, that should never have been on YouTube. You recall that we saw this diagram which shows a clear difference between the dual four core CCX layout of Zen 1 and 2 and the big change to the single CCX for Zen 3. 
Now, to be fair, this actually just shows the unified cache. It could have been a different setup, which could just simply have meant unified L3. But it was confirmed to me in the latest info that I received that this four core CCX is now no more. It is now an eight core CCX. So the next bit of information will likely be just as unsurprising. It is now double the L3 cache size. It is now 32 meg up from 16 meg, keeping the same four meg L3 cache per core. So the L3 cache has doubled per CCX, but that's because it is now fully shared due to the move to the eight core CCX. And looking back at this slide, I did speculate that we may see even more than 32 meg of L3 per chiplet. I mean, what else could this plus mean after all? It clearly says 32 plus megabyte. However, my latest information says that the overall cache size, it stays the same per eight cores. And sticking with the L3, latency is now increased to 47 cycles, which is actually up from the 40 cycles in Zen 2, according to Wikichip and according to Wikichip also, 35 for Zen 1. So L3 latency has increased. And the reason for this is the distance between the cores is that much further now. But that is the trade-off for the increased sharing opportunities, because all the L3 cache misses are now shared amongst all the eight cores. If you recall my cache video where I explained how these dual CCXs work, if one of the cores had an L3 cache miss, then it would have to go all the way out to memory which was a massive increase in latency. Now though, it can check the rest of the L3, which in a sense is simply a doubling of L3. Perhaps a better way to look at it is that the average latency over all the eight cores will be massively improved versus Zen 2, because there is no longer this hop over the infinity fabric between each four core CCX or the requirement to go to memory. So this is a true octo core with huge L3, which should behave very similarly to an Intel octocore, for example, the 9900K, which only has half of this L3 cache. And the rest of the info was fairly general. There are power improvements to offset power requirements of some new features. And we would expect to see some power improvements from the node change. However, the feeling that I'm getting from this source is that these are improvements at the design level, not just the seven nanometer plus node. Next up was a new ISA and security features. And again, we expect to see new instructions with any major release, but I was given no specifics here. I would expect a couple of new instructions, nothing major, but we'll see. Better security, that is pretty much a given these days. And I know the one that most of you are waiting on is the clock speeds. And all I got on that was increased boost frequency. This will be relative to Zen 2. There was no hard data. There was no mention of base clocks either. So this could be like 50 megahertz higher boost or any number above that. I simply wasn't told. And my guess is that they don't know themselves right now. Because as you will see, Zen 3 is a little bit further out than a lot of people were hoping for. The final piece of information I got, again, maybe unsurprising to anyone watching my channel regularly. It is still slightly disappointing though. Milan A0 Silicon is sampling but it doesn't have any working SMT yet. And then B0 silicon is delayed until September. Assuming this is true, my guess is that we should start to see some leaks by Apisac or Rogame soonish, which should show Zen 3 chips in the wild without SMT enabled. B0 silicon delayed until around about September, and that is five months away. The only reasonable reason I can think for this is due to the human malware. I've no idea why it would be that much longer. Although speculating, it could be that there are multiple smaller issues that might need fixing. So this A0 that's out right now, we might see A1, A2 and A3 even silicon in leaks. And the reason this is delayed so long is that they're trying to fix a lot of minor stuff before they go with a proper B0 launch, which presumably would be their production target. And if you remember going back to the financial analyst day, it was something surprising to see late 2020 for Milan. And we did note that in the overvolted AMD financial analyst day podcast. Simply put, B0 in September means to me that we will be lucky to see Zen 3 this year. There's not really any point in launching in December. 
For the data centre, yeah, maybe. But by that time of the year, you've got CES coming in early January, which is a very good time to launch consumer products. But also note, this assumes that B0 comes out flawless. If it doesn't, then we could be well into the first or second quarter 2021 before we even see Zen 3 at all. But I guess we'll see on that. Now, obviously, after I got all this information, I did ask for a little bit more and some confirmation. This is what I was told. Zen 3 IPC gains might be a little bit disappointing to some. And this 10 to 15%, this is one of those 10 to 15% depending on the workload kind of things. However, Zen 3 is considered to be a new high performance core. So the next few Zen architectures will iterate on that. However, the current estimates suggest that Zen 4's IPC gains will be even less than Zen 3's. And when I asked specifically if Milan being delayed meant the desktop would be, I was told that all AMD products this year are delayed. And so Zen 3 desktop will be as well. I wasn't given the reason why. And now to finish off this shorter than usual video, the information I got on Zen 4. Zen 4, 2021, based on what you just heard, that could be a fluid date. It's a five nanometer derivative of Zen 3. No surprises there, we already knew that. IPC will be improved again, but we would expect that. DDR5, we've long since assumed that, but this one is new. One meg of L2. One meg of L2 per core. So perhaps a switch to this dense five nanometers will allow for latencies to remain low, even at a doubling of the size. And another new one, which was long speculated on for Zen 3, has been confirmed for Zen 4, AVX 512. And stuff like the new socket we already knew about, and the very last thing was more cores per socket, which we assumed given Mark Papermaster's comments about continuing to increase core counts with future generations. And there you have all of the information that I have currently on Zen 3. I fully expect all of this to be true. There is nothing big or surprising that I can see. As I said, if anything, it's slightly disappointing based on what Forrest's comments on IPC suggested a few months ago. I expected 20% plus, it looks more like 10% plus. It's what AMD has actually achieved here. I will be back with the Overvolted podcast early next week. And I will have even more leaks for you then. This time though, with exclusive news on future Intel products. I'll catch you later guys.